Hey guys, so uh, doing a little small class today. It's gonna be like 60 degrees and sunny, so uh, doesn't get much better than that. But I figured we would talk about the shot calling versus follow through thing real quick. I'll give you my thoughts on it. If you go to that uh, that question video that I that I put out there, the comments are, are golden. Okay, you got lots of comments from lots of switched on individuals. Uh, both on the tactical side and the performance shooting side, competition side, whatever. So you kind of get a good idea. And that's that's kind of what I want. You know, if I ask a question like that, I know Donovan asks those questions. And it's just cool to see all the answers and see all the different opinions. And even though most of the opinions are similar, there's some differences in, in how everybody's explaining shit. So uh, follow through. I, I don't use the terminology. I don't talk about it. I like Donovan's answer for what he kind of thinks it is and his definition of it. And basically that is following through on a rep, basically finishing a rep of whatever the hell that rep is. And that's kind of how I think of it. Like uh, follow through is just finishing whatever I'm doing and not ending it prematurely. I mean, uh, some people think of follow through as like reprepping and reacquiring sites. I think all that th all that stuff happens so easily, and it happens naturally, and there's so much overlap in teaching, reprepping your trigger and all that kind of stuff that it just kind of happens. We don't really even need to put a put a follow through term on it because you know words matter, and when you throw something in somebody's head. You never quite know how much damage or how much good you've done just from simply putting a small small concept or a small definition in somebody's head. So if I put follow through in somebody's head, all of a sudden they're having really hard time with transitions and over confirmation and not shooting soon enough by over confirming and all these little issues can creep up just from a simple thing that one instructor did one time somewhere some time ago that, uh, that now that, that individual is having a harder time getting better uh, just from that one stupid little thing. So I don't use it. I watch what terms I use. I talk about re-prepping. I never say resetting. Uh, just little things like that. I try to uh, feed, feed people certain words, certain terminology just to steer them. I don't talk about anticipation, all these things in beginner classes just because it's that thing, you know, you don't don't think about uh, pink elephants, you'll think about a freaking pink elephant, right? So uh, that's the, kind of the, the deal there. Now, uh, follow through in kind of a martial context or a fighting context. I think of follow through in a, for me personally, I just think of like in a boxing or fist fighting context where if I have someone hurt or if I have the opportunity to stop this individual, uh, I'm going to follow through on that. I'm going to turn on the juice a little bit. I'm going to go to work. So. I kind of think of that in maybe a defensive context or kind of the thing of, uh, you know, did it work? Like Kerry Trainer, uh, Mickey says, you know, did it work? Does he need some more? All that kind of stuff. Uh, is there any any other, you know, threats? And, and that's kind of the follow through checklist of, am I good right now? Can I, can I get the hell out of here? Or, you know, what, like, am I good? So there's that. But neither of those things have anything to do with what, the individual was arguing with me about and then uh, shot calling now shot calling is in my opinion maybe the most like important conceptual skill that we can have because there's hard skills and then there's kind of those soft skills or software skills I'm getting that from uh, from x-ray alpha and, and Ben and those guys talk about that hard skills being your technique, your, your, your physical shit that you're doing. And then the soft skills, the software type skills are your, your mental stuff, the conceptual skills, those mental cues that you think about and, and all the, uh, the vision and mental shit that you have to do to become a, a, a truly good shooter. I think of shot calling as like maybe the number one, uh, conceptual skill that you can, that you can master. And for tactical shooting, you know, the way I drive this point home, and, and it's cool because this, this comment came up, I think on YouTube, somebody commented about it, but when I'm doing a class with some defensive uh, individuals and I'm trying to turn them on to practical shooting for defensive use, uh, the, the benefits and stuff, 
what I do is we're shooting USPSA targets basically the entire time. And then I, I just simply throw some t-shirts and some plaid uh, button up shirts and shit on the targets. And I'm like, all right, now we're tactical. Now we're defensive, you know? And all of the sudden, when you do not have that good contrast and that good background and that perfect target to shoot holes into, people start to understand the importance of shot calling right away. And we talk about it and, and I explain shot calling to them and, and most of the time it's the first time they've ever heard it if they're a defensive or tactical minded shooter. And then they, they all of a sudden they just see the light like, oh yeah, when there's a pattern on a shirt or this individual's probably gonna be moving and all these different aspects of, of a real life situation, uh, it's very, very difficult to to call your shots without doing proper shot calling procedure or proper shot calling uh, visual skills, like, like knowing how to do it, what to look for is so big. So it's just everything. And if you don't, if you don't, uh, or you haven't ever thrown some, some button up plaid shirts and shit, plaid works the best because it, it breaks up the print and shit. And it's hard to tell where you're hitting if you're not calling the shots, but do that. And it immediately illuminates the fact that, oh shit, I gotta be able to tell where I'm hitting. And yes, gunfights are crazy. Yes, all these things that we talk about might not apply to your particular gunfight or might not apply to 50% or 80% of them. Shit, I don't know. But if that was the case, we would never train past any kind of level. Like the point is to be switched on to where no matter what, we're gonna be able to get down. So please don't come at me with the argument that, you know, gunfights three yards, three feet, three seconds, blah, 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 all that bullshit. You're not even going to use your sights. You know, no, we ain't got time for that. So, uh, shot calling. I go by like Tim Heron's definition. That's the one I think is the most efficient form of shot calling. And that is simply going by where the sight lifts from. Okay, so not where the sights were before the shot and not how good the trigger press felt. Like none of that can tell me where that shot went. The sight lifting, the dot lifting or the front sight lifting is the only thing that's gonna tell me truly where that shot just went. We, we can't feel good enough and we can't guess because if we say, oh, my, my, my dot was right in the middle of the A zone and my trigger press felt good. So that shot should be in the A zone. No, I, I have to go by where the dot lifted from because in that very, very split, split second, weird shit just tends to happen. I mean, that's every time we go look at a target and we got a shot that's whacked out, uh, something weird happened there, whether you were moving and you took a step or you had a little bounce or something stupid happened. Um, or, or you just kind of a little sympathetic grip with the rest of your hand or push or, or some bullshit. Something happened in that split second where you thought you had a good shot. Sure enough, you didn't. So where that sight lifted from is shot calling. That's the way I like to, to think about it. I think that's the most efficient form of uh, getting it into your brain. So, all right, guys, take it easy.